So this is part of my PhD project. Uh, I've put a few notations here on the blackboard. So in the world, in the entire talk, the C would be a smooth predictive curve uh, over C. Uh, v would be a smooth, smooth predictive variety over C. F will be the function field uh, of C. Um, and my goal is to uh, give a description of the asymptotic behavior of uh, the scheme, uh, quasi-projective scheme parametrizing um, uh, the curves um, uh, in V. So the morphism from C to V uh, of given uh, a, a numerical class um, alpha. So alpha is in the dual of uh, the, the N1 of, of V. Um, so the talk will be in four uh, small enough uh, parts, I, I, I hope. Uh, in uh, the first part, I will give a first uh, sandbox example, uh, computing uh, uh, rational curves in P and of C. So I'm computing things in a, a ring of motive in integration. So first of all, I, I will give you a quick introduction to what is this ring of motive in integration in which I will be able to compute the, the class or maybe approximate the class of uh, uh, curves in V. So we'll be able to do the computation uh, uh, entirely in very explicitly uh, for rational curves in PN. And then I will try to um, uh, give, um, to formulate uh, uh, um, a principle describing the asymptotic behavior of rational curves in uh, V, which will be uh, either a Fano variety or something close to uh, being Fano, like a, a toric variety or a smooth um, equivalent compactification of um, power of the additive group of or examples like that. Uh, in the third part, I will um, try to uh, give um, intuition on what could be the expected limit of this uh, object in, in the ring of motivic integration. And finally, if, ti if time permits, I will try to speak a little bit of a uh, concept of equidistribution of curves. But first of all, uh, let's give a few uh, definitions. Um, coming from motivic integration. <coughs> so, okay. So, I will use a ring of uh, varieties over C. Um, which is uh, defined as the Z module uh, generated by isomorphism classes of complex varieties, algebraic varieties, quotiented by the cut and paste relations that is the class of X uh, will be equal to the class of an open subset in X minus the complement of the, this open subset uh, in X. So this define uh, a group. And I can uh, define a ring, a ring structure in this, on this ring given by the product of two variances, I define x times y to be the class of x times y. Uh, in this ring, it's convenient to introduce a particular notation for the class of the fn line. It's going to be named L. Uh, this class is actually a zero divisor in this ring, but we are going to uh, invert it. Um, 
because it's convenient to compute uh, things and let's say you will see why just later. So M of C, sorry, is the ring of motivic integration I'm going to compute things in. Um, OK. On this ring, I, have, I, I need a notion of convergence of series. So I'm going to introduce two filtrations. The first one is a dimensional, dimensional filtration. Um, so the M part of the dimensional filtration will be a subset uh, generated by elements of the form uh, X time L minus I uh, um, with yeah, uh, dimension of x minus i at most equal to minus m. So this is a decreasing uh, filtration on mk, mmc. And I can define the completion of mc with respect to this dimension of filtration by taking the projective limit of, so it's just formal definition of this filtration. So Namely, I will be small if I have very, very negative uh, dimension, virtual dimension. There is another uh, filtration I'm going to uh, use, which is uh, the filtration by the weight. I won't define it. I will just say that it comes from the Hodge realization uh, of uh, smooth varieties. We do not need uh, any, anything more, just only smooth projective varieties. Um, projective, I'm not sure, just smooth varieties. Uh, OK. Uh, just think about this weight filtration as a filtration kind of twice finer than the <coughs> dimensional filtration. It's more precise. It's, it, it refines the dimension one. But okay. Um, one remark, final remark about this ring. It's uh, the following. We can do actually the same uh, construction in a relative setting. So working over a fixed um, finite type, for example, complex scheme, and doing all this in a relative setting over, over a fixed uh, scheme. OK. So let's start with computing uh, things in uh, P1, in Pn of C. So my goal. is to compute the class of this quasi-projective uh, uh, scheme parameterizing um, uh, rational curves in uh, the projective space of uh, dimension uh, n. Of degree d. So, what is a rational curve of degree d? It's actually a rational curve. Um, it, it's given by a tuple of polynomials, homogeneous polynomials, p0 to pn t0 t1, homogeneous 
non-zero all of the greedy uh, without a common divisor. up to a multiplicative constant. So if I define WD as the space parameterizing uh, all these tuples of polynomials, I have a map sending this tuple to the curve, rational curve of degree D in PM. And this is a GM uh, so a tuple of polynomials uniquely define one rational curve up to a multiplicative constant. So in this remark, in, uh, in, the, in the ring of motivic integration, it, it translates to uh, the following identity. We have the class of uh, WD, which is equal to the class of GM. GM is just the affine line minus one point, so its, it's class is n minus one times the class of my moduli space. And now I'm going to compute uh, this class. So <coughs> The problem is this condition on uh, the GCD. They have to, yeah. Right. Yeah, maybe, like, I, I should write bigger? Yeah, yeah okay, sorry. Um, my goal is to get rid uh, of these conditions, okay? So I'm gonna add GCDs to my polynomials. So I start from polynomials which are co-prime of degree d minus delta, I'm going to add a unitary polynomial of um, degree uh, delta to all of them. So I start with q0 to qn, homogeneous polynomials of uh, degree d, a pi. So it will be a homogeneous polynomial with a condition on pi, which is I want I want to send uh, p zero one to one, so that I can see pi uh, as a homogeneous polynomial in a, um, a unitary polynomial in one variable, and they are parameterized by h to the power uh, delta, and I'm gonna send them to the product. If I do that for all deltas uh, from 0 to g, what I end up with is a space of polynomials of degree t uh, with a common divisor, uh, a great, greatest common divisor of, sorry, I'm writing too small. Uh, let's say with the degree of the GCD equal to delta. And um, Such that. Um, Sorry, what yeah. by zero one Here? Yeah. No, is right there. Zero one this guy is an homogeneous polynomial. So oh. if I, the GCD is not defined, um, it's defined up to a multiplicative constant. So if I want to fix the multiplicative constant, 
I, I, I fix the image of, of a point of P1. So I fix the image of the one. So phi is a homogeneous space on R one. Yeah, but with this condition, it lives actually with this affine space. Um, so yeah, I end up with polynomials of degree d uh, with a GCD of a certain degree delta. So I can stratify my space of polynomials with respect to the degree of the GCD. And uh, since my GCD doesn't vanish at 0, 1, one of them doesn't vanish at 0, 1, since I started with uh, co-prime polynomials. So in the end, the, the corresponding space I'm stratifying is just the complement of an, uh, an affine space. Which is really more uh, simple. It's not an isomorphism here. It's a piecewise isomorphism. Namely, I have a disjunct union of this space with respect to the degree. each each part being isomorphic to uh, the corresponding part here, the corresponding uh, part for the degree delta. This is uh, useful because um, in the um, ring of Botevic integration, this piecewise isomorphism uh, provides an equality of classes. So So in um, the ring of complex variety, this gives me the following identity: the class of my uh, affine space here is the class of the wall affine space of dimension n plus, n plus one times d plus one minus the class of the affine space of dimension n plus one times d. So it's just l n plus one minus l t uh, to the power uh, n plus one times d equals the sum. So the class of a disjoint union is the sum of the classes. Um, of the class here. Yeah. OK. Why are we doing that? Well, we are, gonna, we are going to invert this relation. It's a technique uh, coming from arithmetic called Mobius inversion. So we had a condition of the, on the GCDs we, we wanted to remove. So we do this kind of stratification, and then we invert uh, the, uh, the relation. So this gives um, an identity. This is true for, for, for all D. Uh, this gives an identity between power Cs in uh, k bar of C. So in k bar of C, I introduce an indeterminate. It gives me um, that this series L to the power n plus one t t d equals uh, the product of these two series, so the generating series series for w uh, and this one. Okay. No. I see this one as um, a geometric series. Namely, it's the inverse of 1 minus LT. So I can invert uh, the, the relation. It gives me that the generating series of WD is equal to I minus 1 minus LT, L to the power n plus 1 minus 1, 
uh, and this sum L n plus 1 c to the power d. And <coughs> what I was looking for was this class, so identifying the coefficients in, in the left and right sides. I end up with uh, WD equals L n plus 1 <laughs> minus 1 times 1 minus L to the power L minus n. So, and with a some power of L to the power d times n plus 1, I'm going to just put it here. So now I'm in mc. So that you see that uh, this normalized class is constant, does not depend on d. And what is this thing? This is the degree uh, of the curves uh, with respect to the anti-canonical uh, sheath of, of Pn. Uh, so in the end, I get that the class of rational curves of degree g normalized by this quantity is equal to this quotient n minus 1 here and ln plus 1 minus 1, 1 minus n minus n. In, um, in order to divide by L minus 1 here, I'm going to uh, consider this in the completion of MC with respect to the dimensional uh, filtration. OK. So this is a coincidence, uh, the, the fact that it is constant. In general, one cannot expect uh, this normalized class to be constant. but we're going to ask whether it uh, converges to something when the degree uh, becomes arbitra arbitrarily large. So let's talk about motivic di distribution of rational curves. So first of all, uh, we have a fact by a deformation argument we have that the dimension of um, the moduli space of um, morphism from C to V of numerical class alpha is um, bounded by the anti-canonical anti degree of alpha plus dimension of V times 1 minus the genius of C. So it grows um, with uh, this uh, anti-canonical degree. That's why we're going to normalize it uh, by uh, this negative power of L. OK? So uh, one remark I'm going to actually consider a restriction of um, the moduli space. I'm going to consider only uh, curves intersecting um, a given fixed uh, dense open subset of V. Why? Because um, in order to avoid certain accumulation uh, phenomena occurring in an arithmetic setting I will talk about a little bit later. So it's in order to avoid accumulating curves, which might be in some cases. So I'm going to raise the following questions. First question.
does this normalize class admit a limit when alpha becomes um, highly movable. What do I mean uh, by this? Uh, I mean that I ask alpha to um, the distance between alpha and the dual of the effective cone of V um, tends to infinity. And by uh, movable, I mean that the class actually I'm considering um, alpha, uh, it, it lives in the dual of the effective cone, which is by the theorem of Buxom de Mailly von Ampert and Peternel, uh, exactly uh, the cone of, uh, of uh, movable curves on V. Um, the idea is that if I have a curve of uh, arbitrary high degree of very, very movable, I will able to deform it and maybe uh, um, uh, the moduli space uh, have, uh, has changes uh, to converge to something. Um, and question two. Um, question two. Is there any interpretation of the limit available? Okay. It's possible to give uh, an interpretation of, uh, for example, uh, for Pn of this quotient I, 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 I had in, in the end. Um, uh, third question um, <coughs> would be actually a much stronger statement uh, um, which is do curves equidistribute equidistribute uh, so it's time to introduce this uh, notion um, actually um, I can add um, uh, reduction uh, conditions on my curves. I'm going to consider uh, a closed subset of my curve. And I'm going to consider curves with restriction um, to S belongs to um, a given constructible subset of the space of morphism from S to V. Um, so S is a sub zero dimensional, zero dimensional subscheme. So what is that? It's, it's just like, for example, I, I ask my, my curves to pass through one fixed point or maybe through two fixed points with uh, uh, tangency, fixed tangency or condi conditions uh, like that. Um, and I ask so I can consider the corresponding uh, moduli space of Um, curves I can consider the class 
of uh, this moduli space, I can compare it. There is a way to compare it with the class of uh, So uh, V bar W, so it's the corresponding uh, moduli space. That means I only consider curves with restriction to this zero dimensional subscheme uh, belongs to this W, fixed W, fixed uh, set of conditions on uh, above a, a fixed number of points. Um, I'm going to ask whether this uh, moduli space behaves well uh, for high uh, degree curves. Namely, I compare this class with the class of the, the entire modular space, and I ask whether it converges to uh, the natural proportion. Um, sorry. Natural ratio would be. Um, um, this thing. So if I consider the entire set of possible conditions on my curves, here it's the same class, so I, it should tend to, to 1. It's always equal to 1. If I add a um, proper subset of conditions, I ask whether uh, it tends to, to this proportion, to this ratio. So what do we know? <coughs> what is known? Um, <coughs> so the answer to question one is positive for a certain class of <laughs> varieties, namely if V is smooth, Projective enteric, enteric, uh, by uh, successive works of Burki, David Burki, uh, and then Margaret Villu, Rono Das, Shen Ho, and myself. Um, plus, we know that equidistribution holds. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we have a limit. And actually, we have an interpretation of the limit, but I don't know if I will have time to give the inter interpretation today. But yeah, it, this ratio, this normalized class, converges in the case of smooth projective toric varieties. And we have also this kind of phenomena as equity solution. Um, we know also that it holds for V uh, equivalent compactification. of uh, GAN, so a power of the additive group. And ah, yeah, I forgot to say it's for C equal, equals P1. And here it's NEC. And uh, we need uh, the fi filtration uh, by the way, by the weight. And this is uh, uh, the sum of works by Chamberlain and Lozer, uh, 2016, Marriott Bilu, and, and myself. And we also know it for V, an hypersurface. Of small degree, uh, 
uh, I won't give I, I won't give the details of what it means small degree. I mean lo logarithmic with respect to the, the the dimension of the PN in, in which it it, it is. Uh, so it's unpublished uh, work by Bilou and Browning. And uh, that's just for now. Uh, so when did I start? It was like 30 or? 31, OK, OK. Uh, OK, so uh, in the remaining of the talk, I'm going to try to give you an idea of where all this comes from. Um, so we have a well-known dictionary between arithmetic and geometry. So in, in arithmetic, when we <laughs> consider a smallest projective variety uh, over Q, for example, a Fano variety over Q, uh, and study its Q rational points, we uh, consider uh, a model of V over uh, spec V and Q points of V correspond to uh, integral points of uh, curly V. In the geometry called world, we consider the analog of Q would be a CT. The analog of a model of a spec Z would be a model of a, a P1 or C. And CT rational points would correspond to uh, sections of uh, the model uh, over, over P1. And in the case of a fan over 80, uh, we count uh, points of uh, bounded. We introduce uh, a high of bounded height, and it will correspond to uh, curves. So points of bounded height correspond to curves of, let's say, given degree. And um, okay, and this entire question uh, is motivated by the the arithmetic uh, side, which is the uh, the of Manin pair conjecture, which predicts the the asymptotical behavior of the number of rational points on the Fanar variety of a of one in I, it should behave like uh, C times B to the power A times log B to the power B minus one. Um, Maybe here you will have to remove a sin subset, but in order to avoid accumulating phenomena <coughs> occurring in this setting, we have counter examples if you do not remove a sin subset. And here there is a constant. So A and B are related to the geometry of V. And here there is a constant uh, involving some a log product over the over the places of uh, of of Q, and uh, so I'm gonna end up with this by saying that um, uh, in order to to give an interpretation of the limit, we need a motivic analog of Euler products in this setting. 
So it has been constructed uh, by Margaret Bilou in her PhD thesis a few years ago. And we are able, um, in the case of phenol varieties or um, varieties uh, not far from being phano, um, to define um, the motivic analog of this C constant uh, appearing here. So it's, it's uh, about CF manifold. prediction. Um, and uh, yeah, um, and it is known to, to, to the, 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 the answer to question two is uh, positive. So we are, we are able to describe the limit in terms of motivic error products for uh, all these uh, examples. And I guess I'm going to stop here. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>